Hey guys, it's Libby. I guess I'm back. And the main thing that I'm thinking right as I begin filming for the first time in months is that it is uncanny the extent to which I am just the same color as the wall. So as you may be able to tell from the sound quality and the lack of books, I have moved to a new place. This is the reason why you have not seen me for the past couple of months. Um, yeah, so things got really bad at my last apartment to the point where to the point where I didn't have like a situation physically or mentally to be making videos or even really to be reading. Um, basically, I lived on the ground floor and a playground was built truly, truly right outside uh, my apartment. Um, there was a giant tire swing, a meter and a half from where my head was when I slept. Um, I was getting harassed by children, which is kind of embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing when you're getting harassed by nine-year-olds, but when they're all banging on the window, like yelling at you, it's scary. Um, the cat was getting harassed. Our landlord was not doing anything about it. So we basically threatened to sue them until they uh, uh, found us a new place to live. Now we are here. We were having a very difficult time finding a new place to live because coronavirus has like killed the real estate market. Um, so yeah, we are now finally here and things are better. And it is truly just in time because you guys know I'm not missing Victober. We are, by the time I post this, uh, it's probably October 1st and we are in the throes of October. So I'm gonna tell you guys about my TBR. Right before we get to the TBR though, yeah, I know you have been feeling slightly bereft of Libby content recently. Um, I have already filmed a video before filming this one, but it shall not be appearing on this channel. It will be appearing on Kate Howe's channel. Um, it may take you a couple of tries to find me, but I believe in you. So let's talk about the Victober challenges. First one that I'm gonna talk about is Katie's challenge. And this is to read a Victorian book um, that you've chosen based on, hey, based on your kitty, um, based on your favorite modern genre. This one caused me some problems because I do not know what my favorite modern genre is. Um, good, yeah. In order to have data solve this problem for me so that I didn't have to do any self-analysis, I went to um, a big spreadsheet designed by Brock from Let's Read um, to look at all the books I read last year and see like what are what are the genres that I read the most. That there's a decent chance that you know that will tell me what my favorite genres are. Um, so the genres that I met, read the most books from last year were fiction, um, which I believe. <laughs> Normally I don't just classify books as fiction because that's not very helpful, but I reread, I'm pretty sure this is because I reread the entirety of uh, Lemony Snicket's series of unfortunate events and I couldn't figure out what genre they were. Um, so I just wrote fiction and stuck them all in there and because they're middle grade and there's a million of them, um, they went into the fiction category. And then my second most read genre was romance, which is incredibly, you know, edible. Um, but I don't think I can say that romance is my favorite genre. Like I, I reading a lot of romance is different than enjoying a lot of romance. Um, and so like, ah, uh, I mean, I like, I like historical fiction. I like, um, literary fiction. I mean, if you just asked me, Libby, what is your favorite genre? I would probably say classics, um, which is not the point for this. Like, you've got to do your favorite modern genre. Um, so I was really stuck. Um, so I back engineered this and I picked the book that I wanted to read. And then I'm going to use that to say what my favorite genre is. Um, and the book that I ha has kind of been playing at the corners of my mind to finally read one of these Victobers is Middlemarch by George Eliot. We are doing it. This is the month, lads and lasses, we are tackling Middlemarch. So based on the choice of Middlemarch, uh, I'm saying that my favorite modern genre is literary fiction, which is at least plausibly true. Um, so I, I I'm really interested in reading Middlemarch 
and I want to go in with the intention of liking it. Um, which normally I go in with a blank slate for books, but I want to sort of give this book some help. I'm, I'm cheering for it to be good um, because I know some people say that this book is inexcusably boring and other people say that this is genuinely the greatest novel ever written. So I've been trying to prepare myself. Um, I already know that like you stick with one sort of main character for the first many chapters and then but she's not actually the main character you then switch over to somebody else so I'm preparing myself to like not be completely attached to her and be willing to listen to other people's stories if you guys have any tips for how to approach Middlemarch I would love to hear them because I do want to like this book because the audiobook is about 35 hours and uh, if I'm gonna be spending 35 hours of my life doing something I want it to be enjoyable um, so it, another way that I'm sort of trying to gear myself up to make this book a success is that I got both the audiobook and a um, digital copy so I can read I can listen to it or I can read it you know whichever I feel so to be most successful that day that's what I'm gonna do then the next challenge is from Kate, and that is to read a new to you novel or short story from a favorite Victorian author. Um, I was really excited about this one because uh, my favorite Victorian author, as you may have heard, is Thomas Hardy. Um, and uh, last year I finished up reading, or was it earlier this year? Um, I finished up reading uh, all of his novels, but he has also written many short stories that I haven't had a chance to read yet. Um, so I am going to be tackling Wessex Tales, um, which is a collection of uh, maybe five or six short stories. Um, they're kind of longer short stories. I would call them novelettes, and I think some of them are technically novellas if you go by word counts. Um, so I think one Thank you so much, Kate, for saying that this could just be a short story, which means if I only get through the first one, I have still technically completed this challenge. Uh, I think this is also going to be great because uh, these will be nice short things to break up Middlemarch if I need a little bit of a pause from Middlemarch. Um, so I'm not planning to read these serially, I am planning to read these alternately. And then the next challenge is from Lucy, and that is to read a diary or a collection of letters. I don't know if I'm going to do this one. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm really like Middlemarch is very much like the centerpiece and I want I'm trying so hard to make that be successful that I um, don't want to put too much else on my plate um, if I'm not like certain that I'm going to love it um, so this m challenge might happen later in the month if I'm very on top of all of my reading and maybe after some other people have read some diaries and letter collections um, and have made videos about them uh, and inspired me to read them. Um, so this is a maybe happening challenge. Um, and then the last general challenge is um, to read, I'm doing this from memory. I look like I'm looking down, I'm, I'm not. I'm doing this from memory. Um, the last general challenge is to read a book that was on a previous Victober TBR that you didn't get to, um, or if you don't have a previous Victober TBR because this is your first Victober, then just a Victorian novel that you've been planning to get to for a while. Okay, I went back through all of my three previous Victober TBRs, and I actually only had two candidates for this, um, which was quite a pleasant surprise. So. I, I haven't gotten through my entire TBR every Victober, but if I don't get to it in that Victober, I get to it in the next one, or I get to it um, elsewhere in the year. So my only options here were In a Glass Darkly by J. Sheridan Le Fanu, or Lord Arthur Savile's Crimes, Lord Arthur Savile's Crime and Other Stories by Oscar Wilde. Um, uh, these are both great because they are also short story collections. Uh, like Wessex Tales. So I think once I'm done with Wessex Tales, I'm going to decide, do I want something moody and creepy or do I want something more fun and satirical? Is Lord Arthur Savile's crime fun and satirical? It's by Oscar Wilde, so I assume so, but he's also actually written some darker stuff. Um, yeah, so I will, I will see what kind of mood I'm in and then I will pick which one of those I want to read and it's possible that I will get to both of them. Uh, and then there is also a non-book challenge, and that is to um, do some of your reading whilst wearing a Victorian or Victorian-inspired garment. Oh my god, ladies, you are speaking my language. There shall be more about this. 
Um, I'm actually in the middle of working on a set of 1840s undergarments. Um, I have the chemise. Um, I'm working on the corded petticoat, which uh, will take forever. Um, you just take a cord and you sew it around and around and around and around um, in order to stiffen your petticoat. Um, and I think I'm also planning to start on a corset, which I will do entirely through hand sewing um, because uh, I, I do a lot of historical costuming and everything that is pre-1840 um, I do entirely by hand. I don't use a sewing machine because 1840 is kind of the earliest time that you can plausibly say that there was a sewing machine. There wasn't really like it wasn't really being used in the home for like personal sewing. It was very much an industrial item. Um, but I don't care because I'm not doing a corded petticoat by hand. Uh, I'm doing that one on the machine. Um, so, so the corset that I'm making, I want to work for both the 1840s and the 1820s and 30s because the torso, uh, the torso shape didn't really change that much in that period of time. It just sort of got longer. Um, so since I want this to work for the 1820s, I need to hand sew it. Um, so yeah, you'll maybe get to see some of that. Okay, thank you guys very much for watching. It is lovely to see you again. It is lovely to be back behind the camera. That's not the word. On the camera. I've forgotten my prepositions since I've taken a break from filming. Um, let's make it a great Victober.